we not, even though an understanding of the thing, how do you not apprehend presence with your mind? Because presence is not an objective experience. It's a, not a phenomenal event. So the, the mind can perceive, perceive perceptions, can perceive bodily sensations, you know, a toothache, or, you know, sense of your body, some, and the mind can perceive a thought, meaning that's what we refer to as the mind. They're phenomenal events. But presence is noumenon, noumenon. It's not non-phenomenal. I know all that. But I just can't do it. You, I, I can't. The presence is... The presence is not, the presence is not appearing. Mm -hmm. It does not appear to you as a woman, to you, Frederic. Mm. So it, when you say it's not appearing, it's not appearing to me, and it will never appear to you. Because you is what appears. But you, meaning you, the woman, you, the person, appears. And you, as presence, know that appearance. And you, as presence, choose to believe that you, as presence, which is non-phenomenal, meaning limitless, without limits, you choose, you as this presence, choose to believe that you are limited, that you are a woman, that you are a person, that you are a phenomenal event. So the, the infinite chooses to believe that it is finite. And through this belief, it experiences itself, the infinite awareness, as a finite person, as a finite experience, and perceives the world which is its dream, as its personal experience. So the process of answering a question to yourself is to notice that the I that you refer to is an appearance, the, the Frederick, the me, the I that you refer to, is the personal I, is an appearance that appears to you, that you know it, you know Frederick. Because when I ask you, what's your name? You say Frederick. When I ask you, are you a man or a woman? You say, I'm a woman, etc. So there is some thing, which is not a thing, but just using that language, that knows that you're a woman, meaning it knows that appearance, it perceives that appearance and refers to it as a woman versus a, versus a man, female versus a male. So the Frederick that the person that appears, appears to you, if you did not know it, then when I would ask you, are you a woman, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know how to answer. So there is something that knows this, the answer to this question. And that something is not a thing, is what is what is hearing these words. Right now, it's not a female that's hearing these words. Consciousness is hearing these words.
you are this consciousness. You need to realize what you are. You need to contemplate until it's very clear to you 24-7 as an experience that I am that, that borderless aware space, that open space, that presence that perceives, that perceives the Magdis, the Fredericks, the Johns, the Bill that perceives, that knows, I am the knowingness, I am the, the, the absolute. And from that absolute, everything is downstream. And I, as the absolute, I'm choosing to believe myself to be this particular set of experiences. And now I'm choosing to recognize myself. So choose to recognize yourself. You are, look directly. You're just presence. There are no borders. Go, go to that that perceives right now this perception. Go to it. It's yourself. Look at the awareness that perceives, that knows this perception right now. It has no, no dimensions, no borders, no edges. It's not tall, it's not short, it's not female, it's not male, it's not, it doesn't have any viscosity, it doesn't have any color. But yet it's the reality that perceives without the, the knowingness of this perception, this perception wouldn't even be anything. Yes? And this knowingness is what you are. Because you are perceiving this perception. Not your body. It's not a female perception. So go to your emptiness, go to your absence, not to an objective presence, go to the absence. It's the absence that hears these words. The stillness, the emptiness is referred to in Buddhism, the emptiness, the empty mind. So you need to relax all your mind knowledge because the mind knowledge is always, you know, trying to show its how much it knows. You have to neutralize all this old stale junk. Your ideas about yourself and the world and things you read and heard. You have to neutralize them, anesthetic, and anesthetize them. What remains? So in this room there is a lot of furniture. You clear all the furniture. What remains? In this village, there are a lot of homes. You clear all the homes, what remains? Open space. Without this open space, there could not be homes. There could not be, without the space of this room, which you don't see. You don't see the space. You imagine you see it, you think you see it, but you don't see space. It's not, not phenomenal. You can see dust, you can see a bird, you can see leaves falling off the tree, but you don't see space. Space is, you know, yes? 
But without space, how could there be this furniture? Where would they fit? How, how could you bring the, the couch and put it where there's no space? Consciousness is space. Yes. Has no borders. It's what hears these words. It's what allows these couches to be here, the space. If there was no space, you can put the chair here. There's no space. You know, in science they say there's like I don't know, ninety percent of what we know is space. But they're oh they're mistaken. Because they say it's ninety percent, actually hundred percent, you see. They don't realize that they are the space. See, they think there is space, but I am not the space. You know, I'm still there's space. I'm observing space. How can you observe space? So space is expanding. How can space expand? Space is bigger. <laughs> there is nothing else. If there is one reality, and there is space, right? What else would exist? What else would be? If there is one reality. No, but if you believe there are two realities, then there is a reality and there is matter. We have two realities. The reality of space and the reality of matter. But we know deep down there is only one reality. The reality of matter is space. The reality of Frederick is consciousness. The reality of your body is consciousness. The reality of your thoughts is consciousness. The reality of your dreams is consciousness. It's the reality that hears these words right now. It's the reality of the words themselves. It's the reality of the hearer. It's the, the reality of the heard. It's the reality of the hearing. As one. As one reality. The heard, the hearing and the hearer are one. And not a thing. It's not a thing. So it's very important in your question about awareness or presence that you don't mistake yourself to be a person because a person cannot perceive. A person is perceived. You perceive the person, you perceive the woman, you perceive the man, you perceive your bodily sensation, you perceive, but not you as a woman, you perceive the woman. Okay? You perceive the bodily sensations. You perceive, you know, the, the feminine body, the feminine expression. But what perceives the feminine expression is not a woman, has no gender. You see, not right now you're perceiving a male voice. You're perceiving a male form. But what perceives is not male, has no gender, you see. So it's really important in, in your question to, to go to what do you mean by I? As soon as you mean by I a person, then you're, you're in trouble. Meaning, you as a person are hoping for God. But by being a person, you're looking away from God. You say, you know what, God? I love you and so on and so forth, but you know what, I'm a person, man. You know, and I love that person. I'm gonna take care of this person, I'm gonna I'm feeding this person, I am gonna you know work hard to make this person nice and comfortable. I am doing I am taking care of the person, and when I have time for you, I will take care of you. You don't realize that it's God who's taking care of the person. God is taking care of the person, not you. Let's say story. 
That's when you turn you, 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 you gaze away from God and you say, Oh, I, Frederick, I'm taking care of Frederick. I said, you're, 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 you're disregarding the Father. You're disregarding the truth. You're imagining that you are the doer. That you are the chooser, but you're not. Because if you were the chooser, if you were the doer, you would choose your thought. You would choose your thought, but you don't choose your thought. Because if you chose your thought, if you were the chooser of your thoughts, you would choose happy thoughts. You would never choose an unhappy thought, because it's silly to choose an unhappy thought. It's stupid. Right? So if you are the chooser of, of your thoughts, you would choose happy thoughts 100%. You would choose to be intelligent. But many times we're stupid. You would choose to always act with grace and beauty, and, but often you act, we, you, I mean, we act as stupid, ignorant, despiteful, envious, jealous, angry. Yes? Yes. So when we say, oh, well, I am taking care of this person, I am taking care of Frederick, I am taking care of this, of this man, of this woman, I am choosing to believe that, oh, I am God. I, I, the person, am God. So how can you love God as a person? You want to know awareness, presence, consciousness, God. You want God's presence. You want God to show herself to you. And at the same time, you're telling God, you know what, I'm, I, can, I can take care of this body-mind. I'm doing it. God is the only doer. So your prayer is, God, please, I recognize you. Reveal yourself to me. I recognize you as this eternal presence. And you surrender yourself to God. And you cease living in this spinning wheel. Me, me, taking care of myself. Oh my God, oh, what's happening to me with him? It's through God that you're managing your body. The thoughts come from beyond to you. You have to, you have to contemplate, what, contemplate what we just shared now. Contemplate it. And bring this question up, up again and again until it fully settles. Yes.